Again, we're located at the Gary Career Center. Our hours currently are Monday through Friday from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Saturday, we are very eager to look at what we can do to help you. Welcome back to the new number one morning show in Northwest Indiana. News, sports, education, and entertainment. Wake Up GI with Jeffrey Smith. Brought to you by the Geary Community. All right, everybody, we are back about 57 minutes after the hour, three minutes before the top of the hour on a beautiful Thursday. It's the 3rd of November, 2022, and this is Wake Up G.I. with Jeffrey Smith, and we're joined by the Tolberts. That's right, Mike and Shalise. We see, listen, I was talking about this earlier. I don't think you can drive around the region <laughs> without, seeing, <laughs> without seeing one of your wonderful billboards, and I know a lot of people refer to you two as a power couple. Uh, I think you all are great. I mean, I've had the pleasure of meeting you a number of times, as, as long as, as well as my wife, who just absolutely adores both of you. And so, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You Thanks for having us. On. That's yeah. how it works. Well, first of all, uh, you know, listen. As I said before, you all are a very interesting couple because you work together and you seem to be best friends as well. And I just want to kind of start there. Tell me a little bit of background about both of you. I'll start ladies first. That's how we do in the of show. Course, of Go, course. Exactly. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you again for having us on because I know we've been trying to make this happen for a long yes, time. Yes, yes. So we, we're happy to be here. Um, so I guess the, the, the basic beginning, uh, born and raised in Gary, attended Gary schools, um, graduated from Gary Westside High School, and I met this lovely gentleman at Tolleston Junior High. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. We, we've known each other since 1988. Oh, wow. And uh, the reason that we met each other, he was very tall in the seventh <laughs> grade. <laughs> I was vertically challenged, yeah. and he had pretty brown eyes. And yeah. I was like, oh, who's that tall guy with the pretty brown eyes? Exactly. And he liked rap, and yeah. so did I. Yeah. And that back then, you know, little girls, my friends, they weren't into rap, but to find somebody that was cute and he liked rap, yeah, that's how it all started. That's how it all started. Yeah. And so, is that the, is that your version? You yeah, know, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, yeah. version of how it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rap brought us together. Yeah. Eighty eight was a good year, I think. Uh, Big Daddy Kane, Karen's oh, one, by all yeah. means necessary. Oh, you're taking me back. That album was out. Yes. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we bonded around music and rap. And, and so then you went to high school together. We did not we did go to not. high school together. She she actually went to Westside. Right. I went to Calumet, so I'm a warrior. Oh yeah. Uh, that's where my uh, my Gary technically Gary school uh, path Involved diverged. It. Yeah. Yeah. So. But we ended up in the same law school, so uh, we went to different colleges. Yeah, she went to Wittenberg University. I went to Valparaiso University, and then we ended up at Valpo Law together. Now, when when you all were in law school, and you kind of, were you in contact with each other in between those times? Oh, oh, yes. oh yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So yeah. you were best all, friends. Best yeah. friends. Oh, you were, so you were best friends. I knew all her boyfriends. And oh, I knew, she knew all, all my girlfriends. girlfriends. <laughs> they were lames. All but there you go. I'm right. with you. I'm with you. They were not. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> they were just getting everything right. They it, were was just, a, it was just a path to prepare us to be together. That's what it was. That's what it was. And so when you found yourself, in, because this is an interesting story, it really is. Some people call it just like one of these love stories. I'm not, you know, I'm not Mr. Lifetime, but, <laughs> but it feels like that. So you find yourself in law school, of course, together. And was it at that point you kind of said, you know what, let's do this thing. Let's get together. No, uh, no, actually, it wasn't. Oh, really? <laughs> he had a steady girlfriend, and I, I had a steady boyfriend until my second year of law school. But the the woman he was dating, he dated her till after we graduated. And how dare practice. you? What's your problem? <laughs> yeah, you know, she but, she wasn't she wasn't you know, ready to what? settle down. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. ready to settle down. <laughs> you know, but you know, being honest, and, and we've talked about this before, back and forth. We we know we know we had our crushes. We yeah, had our, we had our first date together, group date. Wow. In the eighth grade, as we went to. Uh, the movie theater that used to be on 61st Avenue. I know exactly there. what you're talking about. And, you know, he had his friends with him. I had my friends with us, but it was our little group day yeah. in the eighth grade, and we saw Poltergeist. Oh, my God. Look Poltergeist at you. You still remember. I remember well, that. Yeah. I remember because he recreated it when he proposed to me. Oh, my God. It was Wait like, a minute. He, he recreated Pol Poltergeist or the, or the date? The date. Okay, I was about to say. A lot of things. <laughs> he really Poltergeist would have been no, a little... That would have been interesting. Yeah. No, he did a great job. So, when he proposed to me, he um, rented out the theater. It was still there. He yeah. rented out the theater oh. and had the DVD playing, and we had a date there, and it was just the two of us. Okay, listen. Oh. Let me just talk to you, Mike, right now. Okay? <laughs> there's a lot of dudes listening. You're making it hard for the next guy to go out here and, and do that. That was absolutely amazing.
amazing right there. So, you know, look at me. I'm all up in you all's relationship. <laughs> but, but what point did you kind of know, like, all right, I, you know, I'm, let's do this. I mean, because you're in law school, as you said, you're both with significant others. And then you just, it just seems like this was a natural movement towards each other. I think for me, you know, like I said, bef before we got together, I was in a long-term relationship. Right. I broke up with that young lady. Uh, where she broke up with me. I can't remember. It's all hazy, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. Hazy. Matter of fact, so, it, it really never existed. That's right. <laughs> so we, we were no longer together. And, uh, you know, Shalisa and I basically would talk almost every day. Yeah. Um, and it probably talked, you know, maybe two or three times a day when yeah. we were practicing law. Right. And then one day I was just like, man, we spend an awful lot of time together. Duh. And she's cute. You yeah. Know? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> exactly. and, you know, I dated her like in the seventh grade or eighth grade, you know, so maybe this will work. You right. know? So we decided to give it a go. And uh, I think vacation. a year. Yeah, we ended up going on vacation for, for our, our birthday. Yeah. Our 30, that was the no, first, our 28th our birthday. Our first yeah. official kind of yeah. act as a couple. We went. Uh, we took a vacation to Cancun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, That's uh, a very couple vacation. And my, right? and my and Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, I got to let you know, she yeah. was, you know, she didn't know she was being audited. Yeah, I know oh, what you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. But, but she was being audited. audited. Yeah, I said, you know what? If, if, I'm going to see how she act on this vacation. Exactly. This you know how they get I, when you take them out. Oh, of the oh, absolutely. They start acting different. So yeah. I said, if she can, you know, handle herself out of the country. Yeah. Then, you know, I just might put a ring on it. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm editing this part of the tape. Please. I need your home. That will be a problem. You don't give me the co sign out there. You're saying you don't have smoke in your house for no reason. I don't want any problems in my house. No, yeah, but I, it's right. so. So, you know, let's just kind of fast forward. So you get married, obviously, and, and you all are best friends. And I really think that's the, that's the foundation yes. uh, of a good marriage. When did you, what was it like starting to work together? Because there are so many people out there as couples, and I've, I've got friends who can't imagine working with their spouse. Like if they, if the spouse is kind of doing a little work or stuff like that, they're just like, yeah, this ain't going to work, you know, we, we need our space. But I, you know, I do what Vince and I work with my, my spouse, and it's kind of a little bit rewarding, but I do appreciate the other side. So what was it like when, after all the, the flowers and the rolls just kind of settled down, and you all had to open a practice together? What was that like? Well, I'll say from the beginning when we started planning it, we were doing the same type of work when we were at separate firms. Right. So we were doing a lot of the same work and would talk to each other about what we were working on, get each other's opinions and, you know, strategies and things exactly. without violating confidences of our clients. So when we decided to, to open the firm, yeah, we had never worked together. <laughs> we, you know, before being married, I never lived with a boy. Right. Um, boy. <laughs> right. This was all new to me, but at the same time, um, our work ethic, yeah, very very similar. Um, I'll give Michael more credit though, because he's way more dedicated and passionate mm -hmm. than I am um, with getting things um, done. You know, I'll stop and be like, okay, I gotta take this break or whatever. But when we opened the firm, I I learned new things about my spouse. Right. Like I learned he talked on speakerphone for every call. <laughs> oh. I didn't know that. Before. <laughs> In our offices, we share a wall. Right. You, know? you can hear the whole conversation. For the most part, yeah. but ne but I play music as my white noise in the background, okay. so it didn't, right. it didn't bother me. You know, at first it started, it was like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 I can hear through the wall. <laughs> but other than that, you know, there are days that we don't see each other because we are just handling our own caseloads. Right. And you know, we we still talk to each other about strategy, our right. cases, and you know, just like we did when we were at other places. But now, you know, it just involves the decision making on. You know, human resource things, or right. goals of the right. firm, and things like things like that. And it's it's not anything where I'm like, oh, I'm tired of seeing him. Because sometimes we just don't even see each other. We can be in the office all day, or he'll be gone and I'm there. Or like yesterday, he had depositions that yeah. got canceled, and he ended up working from home. Right. And I was in the office. Yeah, makes sense. So, you know, so let me ask you this, because I've always liked to kind of poke in under the hood of uh, people who start their own firms and things like that. So. I, I'm kind of intrigued by this. So you get together, you start Tobert and Tobert. Now, what was your overview? Was there a maximum amount of clients that you were going to kind of go up to and then you were just going to kind of work that? Or, or what kind of law did you decide to do? Because as you said, you were in two separate firms doing kind of the same thing. Now you're kind of coming together and obviously you want to kind of expand and be able to go in a lot of areas. So how were those decisions made? Yeah, I, I think that we, we already had a strong foundation from our previous firms. Yes. And uh, we came from very good firms that gave us a, a lot of foundation in yeah. terms of how to handle clients, 
uh, the sophistication of the work. So yeah. we, we do a little bit different kind of work and have a different clientele than maybe the average bear. Yeah. So we do a lot of like commercial litigation. Yes. We handle a lot of high profile entities. Yeah. And what we found before we opened Tobert and Tobert is we felt like that was a niche that just wasn't present in the city. Absolutely. Um, so we, we put together a pretty detailed marketing plan, yeah. business plan. And, um, you know, we shot that to a, a few different banks. Uh, shout out to People's Banks. People's, People's Bank was the only Absolutely. bank that, that saw our vision. Yeah. And we just felt like there was a, a certain uh, a vacuum. Expert, expertise yeah, yeah. that wasn't being offered in, in, the legal, in the legal space in the city of Gary. So that was really our goal, was really to be more of a helper for our people yeah, here in our yeah. city and offer an expertise that was really just not being provided here. And the community has just been great, and God has just blessed our practice Amen. so much. And yeah. He's given us so many different contacts and clients yes. and uh, positive people like you that have uh, you know, come into our lives yeah. and that see what we're trying to do and, and has really been helping us. So it, that that's really what has been the driving force. So. We don't do any. We don't do criminal work. Right. We don't do any family law. Not not that there's anything wrong with those areas of law, but those areas of law were already being serviced by other lawyers in the city. Yeah. So we wanted to provide a, maybe a different landscape for the for the legal space in here. Now you, let, let me just say this is because I always make the joke. I've got a number of uh, friends who are in you all's profession, and you know I, I occasionally joke with them a, about it. But uh, I always say, you know, I can get a rock right now, walk outside the studio door, in any direction I'll throw it, I'll hit a lawyer. Because that's just how many are around this area. And for you all to have the foresight to kind of navigate through that, and you have created your own kind of presence here. Because I know, you know, when I first started to see you all's presence and things like that, I was like, okay, here's some more attorneys. But then I found out you don't do criminal law, you're not in the courtroom, you're not out here doing wills in the states and some of those things. And you're kind of Christian moving banks. around this kind of corporate law. This, this kind of skirting it a little bit in commercial law and things like that. I think that is some very interesting for, foresight to have, you know, to be fresh out of law school or fresh from a firm starting your own thing. So, I mean, what did you think about this when you were putting these ideas together, Shalita? Well, I think that part of that came from the firms where we were practicing. Yeah. Because we, you know, as, as I like to think that we're still young attorneys. We yes. were practicing for 22 Amen. years. Wow. So we were out. Um, 15 years in the practice before we opened up Tobert and Tobert. Yeah. And so we saw what the landscape was like, and we've always been community-based. Yes. Even being at the other firms, we've always done stuff for the city that we were both born and raised in. And, you know, we were, we are very involved in our local bar association, yeah. the Kimbrough um, Bar Association, which is the uh, African American Bar Association here. So we knew the areas that were being serviced, and, you know, the, the legal field is, is large, but it's also small. So, yeah. you know, we when Michael said we did a business plan, we literally did a business plan. <laughs> right. We, we did the research. We saw the number of attorneys that were servicing whatever areas of practice. Interesting. We, we did this, and people were very surprised that we did this for a law firm. Right. And I think the other point that I want to make sure is clarified is we do a lot of trial work. So we are in the courtroom yeah, a lot, okay, okay. but it's just not criminal cases. Right. So we're not uh, handling murder cases. We're not handling drug cases. You know, the last trial we had was a, a, a First Amendment case. <laughs> you know, that it went to trial, went all the way to federal court. Right. Uh, Shalise tried an age discrimination case nice. under uh, the ADEA. Yeah. That's the statute. So we are in the courtroom a lot, but it's just different sorts of cases. And then the issue with uh, trust in estates, yeah. that when we did the business plan, wills, that was an area that we saw uh, where we just, in, in communities, uh, minority uh, areas like Gary, uh, people think that you got to be a millionaire in order to have a will. Absolutely. And you don't. No. So our office, we, we, you do, we do, do a state do a state. Shalise does a state okay. planning, and that's more from an educational standpoint. Yes. We really want to educate the community on you know, what should be done before you decide to leave because, you know, you don't want people fighting at your funeral. No, right. no. You know, taking stuff out of the house, you know, while oh, you're at the hospital. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, it's really more of a planning instrument, and yes. I think that in communities, in our community, we need to be taught that. Now, let me ask both of you because it's, I was just listening on you all's path, and, and you have been practicing for a while. I didn't realize that. Uh, has there ever been any kind of ambition or maybe even people kind of suggesting that you – 
kind of do, go into maybe politics or more importantly, <laughs> uh, the judicial avenue, become judges and things like that. Because God, I mean, first, Oregon First Amendment and all those kind of things, that's the... That's the precursor, in my opinion, for what I want in a judge, a, a person who's articulating these things in the courtrooms and can honestly interpret it in Constitution, state, as well as federal. And so have you ever thought about that? Um, I'll start with you, Shelley. I, I, <laughs> I see have, both of you. Also. <laughs> I have not had a desire to be on the bench. However, it has been brought to our attention on several occasions because right now we're dealing with issues of diversity on yeah, the bench. Yes. And locally, we've got... A pretty diverse bench in Lake County, but when you go to the higher courts, absolutely, you don't see us. Um, you know, so that has come up. You know, people have inquired. You know, are you going to put your name in for the appellate court or right? You know, this and that. But I don't have a desire to be on the bench. Yeah, you, you say yeah. that now. You all are totally qualified. But go ahead. Well, I think the uniqueness about our our firm is we're a faith based firm. Yeah, so God drives everything that we do, yeah, and absolutely. we put Him first. Yeah. So I always tell Shalise wherever God. Uh, places us, or whatever, whenever, if he ever touches our heart yes. to be in those spaces that you name, yeah. we'll know it, and we'll hear that voice loud and clear, but I'm not hearing that voice. <laughs> I'm not hearing that voice. I, I'm having way too much fun. I, was oh, to say, he loves I love the courtroom. Oh, I got a trial coming up in two weeks, yeah. so I'm like yeah. in the zone. My yeah. eyes are already yeah. bugging yeah. out. I can tell. So, I'm, you know, I, I just like being in the courtroom, and politics, for me, I think that you have to really be gifted. Yeah, I don't want you that, going that's to politics. A call you, you two are too nice for politics. I don't want you that's all going a call to politics. And so I also want to ask you about this before we move on to your wonderful podcast, by the way, which I check out every opportunity I get. Oh, uh, one of my good friends who is uh, the mayor of Hammond has brought yeah. up an issue years ago on a, a show we used to do, and it was about downstate appointing judges here in northwest Indiana. At least give me your opinions about that. Do you think that we should be able to vote citizens, that is, uh, elect our own judges that we put on a bench from our community that represent us. Well, I think we, for for me, because you were right, head of the bar association, correct? Yes, I was the the president of the Indiana State Bar Association, and I know the state bar association took an official position on merit selection. Yes, which is contrary to uh, the mayor's position. <laughs> that he wants he wants yeah. the, the judges to be elected. Yeah, and our office is actually currently representing the uh, Lake County Election Board. Oh. Uh, who was named in the lawsuit by um, oh, I don't want to the put mayor you out there. Yeah, so we have to be a little bit careful yes. because there's pending litigation. But I will say that um, the merit selection process and the way that judges have been selected here in Lake County and St. Joe County, I yeah. believe, is the other county that has merit selection. The judicial nominating process has uh, garnered diversity on the bench. Because Gina, Gina's the got the last, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Judge Jones was the last person. I believe Judge Adat, uh, who was a, 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 a Adat Lopez, yeah. who was an Indian, Indian uh, born in South Africa, but is of Indian descent, yes. uh, was, was uh, put on the bench. And we've had, you know, going all the way back to Judge Hawkins, going back to Judge Boswell. Right. So the judicial nominate, nominating process has garnered some diversity. Uh, but it's just like anything else. It can always be better, yeah. and we can always have more lawyers of color and minority lawyers on the bench. I like that. Yeah. I, I never really uh, took it from that perspective. You just kind of enlightened me, so I can appreciate that. Now let's switch to uh, UL's podcast, and you all have a lot of fun on that, it appears. Once again, it's just another example of how not only are you all a team, but you're also very, very good friends, and you trust each other because you just sit there and you do your little thing. So tell the audience about the podcast. What's it called? Married people's business. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about how this got started. I, I, you know, obviously there are a lot of people that are getting in the podcast game right now. Uh, but tell me what kind of started this one. When did you all kind of come up with this idea? <laughs> wow. So so people have been approaching us saying, oh, you all need to do a podcast or do a book or do something like for a year before we did this. And yeah. we were like, ah. Yeah. You know, whatever. You know, <laughs> like Michael said before, you know, when God touches our heart to do stuff, we do it. But yeah. That just didn't seem like it was, you know, something that we needed to do at the time that it, you know, people right. were approaching us. Oh, okay. So, I mean, yeah. what, what, tell people what it's about and, and, and what you talk about. Well, Married People's Business is a, a podcast that is intended to uh, highlight positive relationships, yeah. uh, particularly uh, married folks that are in business together. Or that are collaborators. Yeah. And then the other part of it too is uh, you don't necessarily have to be 
be married to create something great. They're, right. they're business partners uh, that come together and they create a, a lot of great things. Like uh, it, Google wasn't created by one person. It no. was a group of people that created Google. Yeah. So our, our point was really to try to highlight the positivity that comes along for coll from collaborations. Yeah. And uh, bring in some very interesting married couples that are really doing great things in the business space yes. as we are. Yeah. Uh, and also just to talk about you know, random uh, things that might come up when you are married or uh, uh, tips, life tips. Yeah. You know, I think the last podcast we had was called Before You Say I Do. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Where we interviewed the Lewises, uh, <laughs> and uh, they just wrote a book called yeah. Rhythm of Love. Yeah. And they gave, like, 25 tips on how to have a successful, sustainable marriage. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, <laughs> we do a lot of, we try to highlight a lot of those uh couples and yeah. a lot of those collaborators now let me tell you what you know because i as i said i've watched and we watch your your podcast and you know as i even started the show and i've told you this before from afar i'm gonna tell you what your show really does okay really i'm gonna, just, I'm gonna let you know i know <laughs> what right. you wanted to do okay but i'm gonna tell you what it does it does something in our community in particular in our community that needs to be done and it just shows that you can be a successful couple uh, and lean on each other and have trust. Because I think, you know, like I'm telling you, when you drive around this wonderful region of ours and you see the Tobert and Tobert logo and you see this, you, you're, you just, you have this natural tendency to wonder what it's like behind the curtain, right? And I think when you all do that podcast, I think you can generally see that there is a mutual admiration, a mutual respect, mm -hmm. and a trust. Because you, 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 you've woven, woven your life together together and you're not afraid to, to kind of open it and share it with each other. So I'm just telling you from the outside looking in, not only for people that may be of our same age, but I think in particular for people that are young, that are worried about how the world would look for them, and they might want to find somebody to share their life with. There's not a lot of those signs out there if you just look out in the popular culture. It's kind of like go out here, get yours, and worry about you, and if you got somebody that's ride or die, whatever. But you, you all show commitment. And I think that, uh, and you talk about, you know, the faith-based, I think that's what you kind of give, and I think that's, that's your brand, if you ask me. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. And we got to have you and your wife on the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah well, we would okay. love that. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we love to do it. We love, we that. love to yeah, do it. So. Yeah. yeah, so um, and before we get ready to wrap it up, so, you know, let's talk about the firm. Let's give a, get some logistics. What kind of law do you practice, and give us your office hours and all that other great stuff. Okay, yeah. so Tobin and Tobin is located at 1085 Broadway. Right in the heart of Gary. Right. Yes. Um, it could be a Miraville Crown Point anywhere. No, we are in the G. Yeah, yes. in the post Tribune old building, correct? That's right. Yeah. right, right, on the second floor. Um, we, As Michael mentioned before, we do commercial litigation. We do personal injury, so if you're injured in an accident, um, we can help you out there. We defend on the other side. Um, Michael's a mediator, and we do uh, some work that's uh, for small businesses, we help entities uh, yeah. form. We do um, the wills in the state and some some property work. Um, oh, uh, look, y'all got to see these too. We do. But I would say <laughs> another niche would be uh, a lot of board governance work. And yeah. We kind of fell into that. Where, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of non for profits will, will ask us to look at their bylaws. Oh, then you're in the right place. I can get them just like lawyers. <laughs> non <-profit. laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we have, yeah, we yeah. do we do a lot of, of that work as well. Yeah. And the other thing is that if we don't do it, we will definitely refer you to someone that we trust. Yes. To, to get it done for you. Absolutely. Let me tell you, this has been an absolute pleasure. Tell us where to find your podcast, by the way. You can find the podcast on basically any major podcast platform. So we're up on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Pandora, um, Spotify, Spotify anywhere, you can, anywhere you can find a, a, a popular podcast. And, but more importantly, we have a YouTube channel where the podcast is also visual. And yeah. It's under Married People's Business. So the, the main thing that I'm asking people that are listening uh, is to subscribe. Yes. Because one of the things that we wanted to do with that podcast is to highlight positivity. Yes. You know, in the world of world star hip hop and, oh. you know, people just showing crazy things through video imaging. Yeah. We really want to try to combat that. And the only way to combat that is to get the subscriptions up and to have people subscribe to the channel. Because once you subscribe, then it becomes, uh, it goes into the algorithms. Uh, yep. 
and then we can we can you know share what we're trying our positivity we can share that on a larger platform so please subscribe absolutely and of course we are subscribers and uh, and uh, we encourage everybody in my tags every morning to to do that so i'm adding that to my algorithm all right appreciate it well, once that. again i want to thank both of you all don't be strangers and i'm looking forward to talking to you all again i appreciate it this i no, really thank do. you thank for giving you us so your much. time on the platform all right appreciate you. there you go we're going to get ready to take a break